Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get a C in your GCSE. This lesson, terminal velocity. Now, if we're going to talk about terminal velocity, we need to focus for a moment on friction. Remember, you get friction any time a surface is rubbing against something. So that could be a surface rubbing against another surface, for example, the brakes on a bicycle or the brake pads on a car, which are going to be rubbing against the moving wheel and they're going to tend to slow it down. You also get that friction any time you've got a surface moving through a fluid. Now that might be something like water. For example, water moving around uh, the hull of a boat will tend to slow it down. Or remember, gases are fluids too. They can also flow. And so if something's moving through the air, for example, a sports car moving very quickly along a test track, as the air flows over that sports car, it's also going to tend to slow it down. That's what we call air resistance. And that's the key thing to remember about all kinds of friction. Friction is always going to be in the opposite direction to the direction that the object's moving, and it's always going to tend to slow that object down. And that's a really interesting thing about friction. The faster an object is moving, the greater the friction is. If, a, if an object is completely stationary, zero friction. And then as it speeds up, that friction gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now with that in mind, let's consider an example. So, if I take this tennis ball, as it moves through the air, if I throw it really hard, then it's going to experience some friction in the form of air resistance. It's going to experience air resistance which will tend to slow it down. As it moves through the air and displaces the air and the air's got to move over the surface of it, it is going to experience some friction and slow down. However, I can't actually throw it that hard. There is a limit to how hard a human being can throw something. And so it's going to be a relatively minor factor, uh, not least because the sphere is a fairly aerodynamic shape. However, if there's another force accelerating it, then that is going to cause a fairly noticeable effect when it comes to that air resistance. And the force I'm talking about here is its weight. Remember, weight is always going to be pulling an object downwards. So if I let this go, the weight is going to start pulling downwards and it's going to tend to accelerate downwards. And it's going to be moving through the air as it accelerates downwards. And as it moves through the air and as it speeds up, we're going to start noticing that friction more and more and more. So let's run through those stages. If I let this go just very, very quickly, then just in that instant after I let it go, just before it starts falling, it's going to be experiencing zero friction, zero air resistance, just for that infinitesimal fraction of a second before it starts really to accelerate, before it starts to pick up speed, it is going to be experiencing zero friction. Now, as it starts to fall, it's going to experience more and more and more friction. It's going to be speeding up and it's going to get faster and faster and faster, and as it gets faster and faster and faster, that friction is going to get greater and greater and greater. And that friction is going to tend to oppose the direction of motion. It's going to tend to slow the falling of this object, this tennis ball. So we've got weight pulling it downwards, more and more, but then the faster it falls, the greater that friction is, pushing it back upwards, opposing that motion. And you've got these two opposing forces, the weight downwards and the friction back upwards, and both of those are eventually going to balance. Initially, the friction is tiny. Initially, in fact, the friction is zero, but it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger the faster and faster this object falls. Eventually, they will balance each other out because the weight of this object is constant. It's not going to get any heavier. So that weight can't get any bigger. But the faster the object moves, remember, the greater the friction becomes. And we reach a steady state where the friction and the weight end up balanced. We've got the weight downwards and the friction, the air resistance upwards, and the two of them balance out. At that point, when the forces are all balanced, we have a resultant force of zero. Do check the video on resultant forces to check you understand that. Weight downwards, air resistance, friction upwards, balanced out, and we get a resultant force of zero. And if we've got a resultant force of zero, then this object can't accelerate anymore. It's still falling very, very, very quickly through the air, but as it does so, it can't accelerate. It's reached the highest velocity it possibly can and all objects 
falling through all fluids, be it the air, be it the water, be it a ball bearing, falling through a, a cylinder full of oil, all of them will reach this final velocity that they can't accelerate past. This is called the terminal velocity. So let's consider now a skydiver falling through the air. In the instant this skydiver starts falling, he's going to be experiencing zero air resistance, zero friction, because he's only just started accelerating downwards. Now, as he accelerates downwards, again, his weight is not going to change, but as he falls faster and faster and faster, that air resistance is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually the air resistance is going to get so great that he won't be able to accelerate anymore because that air resistance will have balanced out his weight. He is still falling here. He's not stopped. He's still moving downwards. But that air resistance has got so big that he's now reached his terminal velocity. He can't accelerate any faster than this. Last of all, let's consider how this skydiver's descent would look on a velocity time graph. So, as soon as the skydiver jumps out of the aeroplane, he's going to start accelerating due to his own weight pulling him downwards. However, the faster he moves and the greater this velocity becomes, the greater that air resistance becomes, and so that air resistance is going to oppose the acceleration due to his weight. And so the acceleration starts to tail off. Those forces start to cancel each other out and eventually he reaches this constant velocity, this constant rate of descent, and that's his terminal velocity. If you want to know what the terminal velocity is, you just read it off this axis here. Now, he doesn't want to hit the ground at this speed. That's going to injure or possibly kill him. So, he needs to open his parachute. The parachute has a massive surface area and so the parachute has massive air resistance. And because of that, it slows him down. And you get this sort of thing happening. A quite rapid change in velocity. Suddenly that velocity drops. He's still falling here. He's still got that positive rate of descent. So he's still descending. But the rate at which he descends drops off. Okay, so he opens the parachute. And suddenly he starts falling much more slowly. And then he hits the ground just here and comes to a complete halt. That's the last thing you need to worry about when it comes to terminal velocity. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and if this video was useful to you, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe, or share it with anyone else you think could also use a little help. Thanks for watching.